uh, my husband first brought me to Miami. He was uh, he was living here, and um, when we decided that we were going to move in, to, you know, move in together, I decided that this was where you know this is where we wanted to be. We had um, I was working in national accounts, so I could live anywhere, and Dan was running um, a business for Latin America, and um, so this was the right place for us to be. And I was excited to move to a new city. Well, it was something. It was something that really built over time. Um, we started collecting when we when we first got together and moved here, which was in 1997. And um, we chose art to be our thing to learn and, and grow together. And um, we very quickly got very um, immersed in the local art scene and going to places like the Bakehouse and at that point Art Center in South Florida. And we realized very quickly that. Our passion for the art was really more about the artists themselves than the objects in which they were making. Um, although we love the, you know, we love the the art, it was really the getting to know the artists and being a part of the artist lives that really changed um, how we collected and what we what we valued. So it was something that we kind of began to think about. Um, and began to think about more seriously in 2007. And we also were, kind of, we were very close with the different museums and nonprofits. Um, we were trying to support the new galleries that were opening up at that time. And so we really wanted to give back to artists and our community in a, in a different way and in a more impactful way. So in 2000, late 2007, the house across the street came up for sale. And I was like, wow. If we're going to do this residency thing, that would be that would be the perfect place because we can we can be here, we can nurture the the artists, we can be available to them 24/7. Um, it's centrally located, so in our support of the museums and the nonprofits and the galleries, they're all right here. So this would be the perfect location. So we we closed on the property in 2007 and um, started Fountainhead in 2008. So we select the artists through a number of different processes. One is through um, alumni nomination. Uh, we've had over 500 artists from 49 countries to date. So we have a vast alumni network around the world. And our alumni, you know, they know the program. The, the beauty of residencies is they're all vastly different from one another. Each, each residency has its thing or its location or its what it gives, you know, what it gives back to the artists. And ours is very Ours is very much about connection, about nurturing, about becoming a part of the Miami arts community. And um, so our alumni know that, right? So they, they know the program intimately, they've taken part in it, um, they know the activities, they know the, you know, how much time is spent working versus how much time is spent exploring and connecting with Miami. Um, so we find that the alumni nominations are really a, a very important part of the process. So. Uh, alumni nominate artists and then it's also important for us to connect with artists or um, that who do not have some sort of relationship already with with Fountainhead or one of the artists that attended so we also do an open call um, we unfortunately only accept the first 300 applications for the open call but that's because when we've done open calls we've gotten thousands of applications and artists do a lot of applications and when you're talking about a thousand, thousands plus um, applications and you have 33 slots, the percentage of uh, people that are actually going to get in is so small and I, I don't like to waste artist time. Um, so we just accept the first 300 so the application opens and it closes when the first 300 applications come in. So those are how we, um, how we, how we um, get the, the roster of artists from which we select them to bring. Um, I should say, actually, we have we have one other um, one other way, and that is through we have different strategic alliances and partnerships. So each one of those has an independent process um, to it. Everything is always at arm's length, um, which is important to say. So because we do have people that sponsor artists, but they sponsor artists either through a, a, a country or a medium that they're interested in, but they are not actually involved in the selection of the artists. So once we have this pool of artists, we then have a curatorial jury, um, and we have a different different curatorial jury every year. 
Um, it always includes an alumni from our program and then different curators, either independent curators or museum curators from around the country. We, we, pro we try to um, um, select curators from across the United States so they're not just centralized in, you know, in Miami or in New York. Um, and those, those curators get together, they score the applications, then they discuss uh, the different artists and, and talk about why they scored one artist higher than another. And they will bring the list of artists down to about 55, 60 artists. And then from there, we start the interview process. So if you keep in mind that, you know, not artists is, not every artist is available for 12 months of the year, right? So they have certain months that they're, they're available. And then also we, we, we really try to focus on artists that we feel will be good together in the residency. Because one of the values that, um, that artists know better than anyone, but that, that sometimes people on the outside don't realize is that that relationship that happens within the residency and the conversations that happen within the residency with the, the artists that are together are invaluable. So it's important that you put people together that you, that you feel, that you hope are going to be, you know, compatible, that they'll, you know, that they'll engage with one another in unique ways. And it may be because, it may be because they're working in the same medium and in a different way. So they're, they're able to share their, you know, the, the, what they've learned or share new techniques or new processes. Or maybe it's that they're working in vastly different mediums and they can, you know, one art, you know, an artist generally has the, you know, has the ability to realize their, their concepts through different means, right? Even if they've been a painter all their life, they may be a draftsman or a, or a, a sculptor within. So it's, it's interesting to um, put people together working in different mediums. And then, or maybe there's a common thread within their practice, but there's always something that we see um, in, in each of the three artists that we put together. And then of course it comes down to their availability too. So that's when I like to say, that's when the, that's when the Rubik's cube starts to work and we try to figure out who we're putting in together and, um, and in what months. So that's really, again, it starts broad, the curatorial team te brings it down, and then we start the interview process and then we start to put people together into these groups. Member trip started really because I wanted I wanted I wanted people to explore the world through artists, through the lens of artists, right? Because you see a, you see a city so differently when you have the opportunity to do so through artists and the art and the institutions that are there and the collectors that are there. It's a completely different view of a, of a city. It's a very kind of, you know, like insider tour, but with it, with the lens on, on artists. So our first one was to Paris. Um, and since then we've done, we've done Paris several times, Mexico City, Guadalajara, in the United States we've done Bentonville, um, New Orleans, um, New York City, <laughs> it's not a big one, do a lot in Miami obviously, um, and upcoming we have um, North Africa, South Africa, Istanbul, um, locally, not locally, but in the United States we're looking at doing Detroit. Philadelphia. We've also done Pittsburgh before. Um, we'll be doing more programming in New York, but that's what we have coming up. But it's really, the trips are about, you know, really immersing yourself in the culture of a city um, through the artists and the collectors and the institutions. So like on this last trip where we went to Argentina, um, you know, we got to go see collectors' homes, and, and collectors' homes are important because one, everybody loves to see into into other people's lives, right, and how they how they how they live. But it's it's really interesting to see, you know, what people choose to collect. Like um, this last trip was a very interesting one because we had one collector's home that was that collected in a very specific period in depth. I did a tremendous amount of research and all of the work within his collection was for this specific genre and time period. Um, then we went to another collector's home that was all about contemporary art. 
um, and, and it was in every medium possible. There was you know, work on the ceilings, work on the floors. Um, it, was, it was extraordinary. I mean, they were all extraordinary. Um, and then there was another, another collector's home that was really focused on the masters from Argentina. So we really saw like the gamut of um, what people collect and then how everyone lived with that work was also very different. You know, we saw um, one was a, a smaller apartment that he shared with his kids and there was just art, you know, art everywhere. Um, another another place was um, uh, hung salon style, which means there's work from floor to ceiling. And in that case, he had actually invited an artist within his collection to curate the entire home. So they, as, as the homeowners, the people that live there, didn't choose where the works went. The, the artist slash curator chose the works, um, which is very different. And then another home, the other homes were really hung by the um, hung by the homeowners. But again, it was just different in how they they lived with it. Some homes are, you know, super casual and comfortable and art, you know, everywhere. Others are, you know, more elegant but still warm and welcoming because it's it's kind of impossible, I think. <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's impossible to to go into a collector's home and somehow not feel welcomed because when you collect work, you're in some ways, you know, exposing yourself, exposing, you know, what you what you're thinking about, what you love, what you want to surround yourself with. It's a very intimate, it's a, a very intimate engagement. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I, it, it's, it's fascinating to see and it's, it's so, I think what the other reason that going into collector's homes are important is because you see that as, as, a, as a viewer, as someone, you know, um, going for the first time, it kind of gives you this, um, this opportunity to just breathe and realize whatever it is that you want to surround yourself in your own home is fine. Like, it's a great thing. Like don't, you know, so many people are concerned with, you know, can I collect? Am I smart enough to collect? I don't have an art history degree. I don't know what I'm talking about. None of that matters. All that matters is that you choose work that speaks to you, right? Because I can tell you, you know, even if I didn't know anything, like it, you know, it's, it just, um, if you can sit there and talk about why you bought the work, why you chose this work, that's all that matters. Like that's really all that matters. This is your home. It's what you choose to live with. Just really do kind of grow how people love and collect and live with art, right? Because we do, um, you know, for example, like we, we went to lunch with Leandro Ehrlich who is an artist that, that happens to be, you know, showing right now here in Miami. Because we always try to, you know, we always make a connection between Miami and where we're going and alumni and where we're going. Many of these trips are driven by where we have, where we have alumni. And um, so, you know, we, we got to have lunch with Leandro Ehrlich, who, where we, we had this amazing in-depth conversation um, about his work and why he makes his work and, and why, um, you know, why his focus is really on, you know, engaging people in, you know, in these, in these experiential sculptures that he makes. And it was like, it was the conversation, it was a conversation that we would have never had. And that's really the beauty of art, right? Is that it, it does spark these conversations. It opens these doors for us to talk about things that we wouldn't otherwise talk about. But then we also, we had this amazing Parisian in the street in, um, you know, in a, an area where a lot of artists had their studios and literally they just made this incredible barbecue where they put wood directly on the streets and these big grates and just put, you know, slabs of meat and vegetables and cooked it up in the street. It was the most, it was the most fantastic experience to be sitting there, you know, with these like picnic tables set up in the street. And it was just like a, a, a big, block party, you know, and those are things you would you, you would never do if you went there on vacation, you know, and I, we talked about going into the collector's homes, but it's also, you know, we would, you know, we'd have 
dinner in a in a garden. We had the Ministry of Culture came and 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 had lunch with us because he wanted to welcome us to the city. Um, and I I would never get that otherwise. I you know and and the, the beauty is a lot of these things happen um, because we work with experts in each city that that are truly immersed in their city. And in this case, Gabby was just extraordinary, you know, and she also knew restaurateurs. Everybody went home with new works of art, which is fantastic. You know, again, it's because they really connected with the artists, they connected with the place. Um, in some cases, it was kind of like, okay, oh, I really want that, but I think she wants it too. And she hasn't bought anything yet, so I'm gonna let her have, but if she doesn't want it, I'm gonna be sure to get it. It's like kind of funny. There were a few times where it was like, you know, People wanted to jump on getting something because they wanted to make sure that they were the, the first one with the opportunity. So it's 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 really it's exciting to see because that that you know that um, you know it just enlivens this passion and this desire to to support the artists that are that are there that have taken the time to to open their studios and open their hearts to us. Um, and it, it, and you know, and everybody gets to like, you know, take a, a, a memory back with them at the same time as providing the support. So it's perfect. The residency uh, is, is an urban residency. So I think that's important to mention too, because so many residencies are, are kind of in the middle of nowhere or on the outskirts of town. Um, and ours is based here and really in the heart of the city of Miami um, in the neighborhood of Morningside, which is actually the oldest historically re registered neighborhood in Miami. Um, it's it's tree lined, all of the homes are different. Um, the, the, the people are as eclectic as the homes, I like to say. It's a real, uh, it's a real neighborhood. You know, every morning and every afternoon, the streets are filled with people heading to the park to play with their kids, walking their dogs, having a, you know, having a cocktail as they walk down the street. It's just a beautiful, um, beautiful neighborhood. And it also sits right on Biscayne Bay. <clears throat> so it's, you know, we have access to the water. We have um, one of Miami's largest waterfront public parks. So the artists can take take advantage of the park. They can take advantage of the water. Um, and again, they can walk and bike and um, do yoga, whatever it is that they what they whatever it is that they want to do. And and part of the residency is really immersing them in Miami. So we of course have a lot of places that we go to regularly. Um, we try to go to as many of the museums as possible. We're lucky that, that um, you know, we're very centrally located. So I think I, I, I drew a, uh, a, you know, a circle around the residency and almost everything's within literally five miles, including the airport in Miami Beach. So um, it's very central. It doesn't take us long to get anywhere, but we do go to all the museums, you know, the, the, the PAM, the ICA, the Bass Museum on the beach, um, the Rebel Museum, of course. We do the private collections, um, the De La Cruz collection, the Marty Margulies collection. There's a few new collections getting ready to open, so we're gonna have to make more time for those. Um, but, um, so we, and then we, we always visit other nonprofits like um, Locust Projects, Big House, um, so that they can also <clears throat> experience different, you know, the other institutions that are here. Um, and then, you know, we, we have some favorite restaurants um, uh, that are, you know, we really try to support local, you know, and also like family owned businesses or smaller, smaller um, businesses. So um, Fiorita is one of our favorite restaurants. Um, we go to um, Nidu, which is a small Italian restaurant, Boulevard Bays, which is owned by um, uh, Barkley, who also owns Sherman's and um, Morgan's, of course, and um, where else do we go? We spend a lot of time in the design district. It's just beautiful. I mean, the public art collection, the design district is fantastic. The restaurants there are amazing. There's some great happy hours there, which is always good. Um, we um, we always do a, a, a day at the beach because if you can believe it or not, uh, we found that most artists actually never made it to the beach while they were here because they get, get so inspired and so immersed in their work that they 
never actually went to the beach. So we, uh, we have a mandatory beach day <laughs> where we go to Soho Beach House and everybody just relaxes and <clears throat> swims in the ocean and has lunch on the beach. Um, but um, yeah, and then we also, we, you know, nature is an important part of, um, of certainly my life here in, um, in Miami. And I, I like it, you know, I like to introduce the artist to, you know, to that side of Miami as well. So we have kayaks and paddle boards at the residency. So we take, um, we have, there's a little island off, um, there's several islands right off of um, Morningside Park, but there's one that has a beachy area. So we go there and watch the sunset and have a cocktail and it's just beautiful. And we take the paddle boards or kayaks um, to get out there. And we have enough watercraft that we usually take people with us. So we have, we'll, we'll take, you know, there'll be 10 of us out there on the island. Um, and then I have a, um, a swim group that I co-founded with some other uh, passionate swimmers. And um, so we swim in the bay or in the ocean. We mix it up every other day. So, you know, we, uh, they, they, they can come swimming with us. And actually this month's group is um, all three of them swim. So I have multiple swimmers uh, swimming with me, um, but it's a great group of, uh, of people that we co-founded. It's called the Dolphins and Rainbows. So if anybody else wants to join us in open water swimming, there is a Facebook page you can ask to be, uh, you, can, you can friend it and ask to be a part of it. But it's just this beautiful group of people that, you know, we come together through our passion for swimming. But um, it's, a, it's kind of a support group that extends far outside of um, just swimming. And it's just an amazingly diverse group of people. I was thinking the other day about a time when um, I was just standing on the beach before our swim on a Sunday. And I was looking at all the, the faces and talking and you know, listening to the conversations happening. And I realized how, how diverse the group was. And so I just asked, I was like, I want to hear all the different countries where people are from, like not where their family's from, but people that live somewhere else and are now living in Miami. It was 19, 19 different countries. I was like, that is extraordinary. Like that is Miami. It's this incredible melting pot of people. And the, the beauty of Miami is that, you know, we're a young city. So we're a city where as a as an individual, you can you can have an impact. Like if you have an idea, if you're passionate about it and you have grit and determination, you can make something happen in the city and you can have a real impact. And that's the Miami that I want everybody to know about. One of the other important um, aspects of, of uh, Fountainhead we have the, the supporting of the artist side, but we also have the developing of new appreciators or the welcoming of, you know, of uh, people that have appreciated art for years. And we do that in a number of different ways. One is, you know, every month we host an open house that is completely open to the public, completely free. So you can come and meet the artists and you actually, you know, again, you meet the artists, you see the work that they've made, you talk with them about their practice, you understand why they do what they do, how they do what they do. Um, you see the materials that they've used surrounding them. Um, and, and really that's about, you know, we're trying to break down the barriers of, you know, that, that, you know, that are perceived in the art world. Um, again, we talked earlier about, you know, you can, you can look at a piece of work and you can appreciate it um, for its beauty or for its context or, you know, but, but getting in and understanding why is what I found really connects people. And it's that connection to a piece of work that matters. Like it's, it's, it, it's always so interesting to me that people have no problem talking about the music that they like, but the food that they like, the type of architecture that they like, how they think someone's garden looks. And all of those are, are you know, all of those are art forms, right? But with the visual arts, everybody feels like they're supposed to have an art history de degree to be able to collect art or even to be able to have art in their home. And I'm like, why is that? Why is why is visual arts the only form where we're expected, where we, we expect ourselves to be an expert before we actually 
do something and surround ourselves with work that we that we love. So we're hoping that through Fountainhead, you know, you can you can see that it's okay just to follow your heart and follow your gut because if this is what you want to live with, that's all that matters, you know. So when we host the open houses, um, and then we also have a, a membership program, and that's where you can kind of dig a little deeper and get and get um, more insights and kind of more one-on-one -on -one time with artists and institutions. Um, that, that that membership, and also you, it's a smaller group, so you you develop relationships with the people that are that are in the membership group, and you learn from one another, you explore together, um, and um, so and. Again, in this idea of always trying to bring new people in, um, Francesca Neighbors, who is our program director, um, initiated a new program called the Contemporaries, which is for people that are 35 and under. And we don't call it the Young Collectors Program because it's, it's not a Young Collectors Program. It's for people that, we do have people that collect art within the program, but it's really for people that are just, they're just eager to learn and interested to experience art in a different way. And they, they maybe are a little bit nervous about getting into the art world. So the Contemporaries program um, is a very immersive program um, for young people to welcome them into the arts and also really other forms of art within the, um, within, um, the Miami community. We're going to look, we're looking to do partnerships with the, with the symphonies, with the, you know, with them, with oh, Miami poetry, with the ballet. So we're, we're hoping to really immerse, um, immerse young people in, uh, in all of the arts and culture that Miami has to offer.